Welcome back to Frindle. This is chapter four, Word Detective. It was a beautiful September afternoon. Bright sun, cool breeze, blue sky, but not for Nick. Nick had to do a little report for the next day, plus copy out all the definitions for 35 words. For Mrs. Granger, this was not the way school was supposed to work. Not for Nick. There was a rule at Nick's house. Homework first. And that meant right after school. Nick had heard this, his older brother James groan and grumble about this rule for years, right up until he graduated from high school two years ago. And then James wrote home from college after his first semester and said, My grades are looking great because when I came here, I already knew how to put th first things first. That letter was the proof Nick's mom and dad had been looking for. Homework first was the law from September to June. This had never bothered Nick before because he hardly ever had homework. Oh, sure, he looked over his spelling words on Thursday nights. And there had been a few short book reports in fourth grade, but other than that, nothing. Up to now, school work never spilled over into his free time. Thanks to Mrs. Granger, those days were gone. First, he looked up the definitions in the brand new red dictionary that his mom had bought, because Mrs. Granger told her to. It took almost an hour! He could hear a baseball game in John's yard down the street, yelling and shouting, and every few minutes the sharp crack of a bat connecting with the pitch. But he had a report to do for Mrs. Granger. Nick looked down at the very front of the dictionary. There was an introduction to the book called Words and Their Origins. Perfect, Nick thought. It was just what he needed to do his report. It would be all over in a few minutes. Nick could already feel the sun and the breeze on his face as he ran outside to play. Homework all done. Then he read the first sentence from the introduction. Without question, this modern American dictionary is one of the most surprisingly complex and profound documents ever to be created, for it embodies unparalleled etymological detail reflecting not only superb lexicographic scholarship, but also the dreams and speech and imaginative talents of millions of people over thousands of years. For every person who has ever spoken or written in English has had a hand in its making. What? Nick scratched his head and read it again, and then again. Not much better. It was sort of like trying to read the ingredients on a shampoo bottle. He slammed the dictionary shut and walked downstairs. Nick's family did a lot of reading, so bookshelves covered three of the four walls in the family room. There were two sets of encyclopedias. The black set was for grown-ups, and the red set was for kids. Nick pulled out the D volume from the red set and looked up dictionary. There were three full pages with headings like early dictionaries, word detectives, and dictionaries today. Not very exciting. But he had to do he had to do it, so Nick just plopped down on the couch and read all of it. And when he was finished with the kids' book, he opened up the black encyclopedia and read most of what it said about dictionaries too. He understood only about half of what he read. He leaned back on the couch and covered his eyes with his arm, trying to imagine himself giving a report on all this boring stuff. He'd be lucky to have three minutes' worth. But, because Nick was Nick, he suddenly had an idea, and it brought a grin to his face. Nick decided that giving this report could actually be fun. He could make it into something special. After all, Mrs. Granger had asked for it. Now, I wonder what in the world he is going to do to make his report on, about where words come from fun. I mean, it's fun for me. I think words are amazing, and I think about where they come from all the time. But I'm an adult. I studied that in college. How is Mick, who is only in fifth grade, going to make it fun? We'll find out next time we read.